be presenting today about um, uh, the tribe uh, Tatasin and the wonderful diversity in Australia. Uh, and I'll be presenting some of the 29 new species that we found um, during uh, three separate field trips in Queensland with Jerome Constant. The Tartasini are currently one of uh, four tribes within the Tartasini subfamily, but we learned this morning that the Stenocatini and Thimbrini, which were moved to this um, subfamily in 2009 by Jones and Dix, um, that maybe that there are some questions about the placement of those tribes, um, and maybe this afternoon we'll find out more about um, where those tribes belong or could belong. <laughs> um, so the standard continue are mostly Australian endemic, um, is a, an Australian endemic group, and it includes the um, Ledromorpha paniostris, which is the biggest leafhopper uh, in the world. It measures up to 32 millimeters. Um, the Thimbrini are known from Australia and New Zealand, and they, they are quite large leafhoppers as well. They tend to be uh, sometimes quite drab, like grey, mottled brown color in colour. They can look very similar to the Tartasin, which is the um, tribe that I'll be talking about today. Um, the Tartasini, um, in the sense of Faith Evans, who revised the the, the group in 1981 um, has an Australasian, Indo-Malayan, Oriental distribution. And uh, relatively recently, the Neopsini were moved to this uh, subfamily as well, and that's um, a neotropical representation of, um, of the subfamily. Uh, just some features of the Tartasini which might also um, feature in other groups as well, but um, to identify the Tartasini, they're generally small, um, sorry, medium sized to largish leafhoppers, they can be up to 12 millimetres. They're usually um, grey, green or brown, they can be quite plain in colour, uniformly coloured, um, but then you get some really nice um, species in the genus Microtatis that are uh, yellow and black and quite contrast, have contrasting colours. Um, the acelli are usually found on the, on the margin of the face and on the, um, on the crown, or margin of the face and the crown. Um, but one of the characteristics of the tribe is the sort of heart-shaped pronotum, uh, which is extended, um, produced anteriorly. Um, they have broad maxillary plates. The appendix is usually on the tegment is quite broad and extended around the apex. Uh, the hind wing has a marginal vein, which extends into the anal area. The hind tibia have the small CT uh, between the macro CT, um, and the male pygopha <coughs> has um, usually has accessory processes arising from the ventral margin. Or um, one of the interesting points about the genitalia of this group is the anal tube has a, often has a um, basal process as well. Um, the Tartasini are usually generally known to inhabit dry open forests and as well as semi-tropical to tropical rainforests. So it's considered quite unusual for insects to um, have closely related species occurring in both habitats. Um, there's very little known about the host plants and um, the only records are really on the Taisi in Australia. And in Vietnam, uh, Vladimir Meslov collected the Tartasini from diptyocarp forests 
an evergreen forest, and he described 300 species from Vietnam relatively recently. Um, as far as I know, there's no known vectors of plant diseases in the tribe, but there's one species, Tartessus ferruginis, ferruginis um, which is quite widespread in, um, in the Oriental region in Southeast Asia and um, also found in New Guinea. Uh, and it's a pest of citrus, fig and tropical fruits. Um, there are actually five subspecies in this um, species and so it would be very interesting to look at, at this one um, because it's so widely spread in, in the region, you know, whether there are those subspecies actually um, represent um, species in, in themselves. <coughs> so worldwide there are 130 species known and uh, in 37 genera. Um, and in Australia, uh, there are 69 species in 22 genera. In New Guinea, there are 59 species in 17 genera, but only two species are known in common between those two regions and, and four genera. So it, it highlights the, that they're very endemic in those in, in Australia and in New Guinea. For the rest of the 17, I guess there are around 17 species known in the uh, Oriental and indo malayan region, uh, yes, which is quite poor compared to the other, um, to the Australian and New Guinean fauna. But it could be that we haven't really looked um, as well in, in the Oriental region to find more species. In the Philippines, there are three known species in, um, in one genus, um, and none of those are only known here in the Philippines. So it'll be interesting, hopefully in the next few days, we might find some new species in the Philippines, who knows? But that would be interesting to see. She described, uh, she described 84 species of the 130 species known, and 32 genera of the 37 genera that are currently known. Um, 37 new species were from, found in Australia, and 18 new genera were described from Australia in that work. And she moved 24 species from the genus Tartessus to new genera. And so in Australia, we no longer have the genus Tartessus. Um, most of the holotypes are found in the Australian Museum. Um, and some are in good condition, like the species at the top there. Um, the, I think it, at that time, they mounted the genitalia on these um, slides in a resin that I'm not, I'm not sure what the resin is, but um, it makes it difficult to, to see the genitalia clearly. Um, but luckily in Faith's work, she illustrated um, quite well the, the genitalia of all of the species. So um, unfortunately, some of the holotypes are damaged or missing. Sometimes there's only a leg uh, represented or no specimen at all and just the genitalia. So having the illustrations and um, the descriptions were quite scant. They're, they're um, yeah, they were quite brief, the descriptions, so, so having these um, illustrations was, was very helpful to compare um, specimens that we collected. So Queensland is a state of um, Australia, it's uh, this, uh, I think the second largest state of Australia in size, and um, it's where most of the rainforest is found in Australia. Um, we have the Great Dividing Range, which uh, uh, extends from the south in Victoria up through to Queensland. Um, but it's one of the states that has, where the fauna has been best documented. Um, 
which is an interesting point for later on. <laughs> um, there's now currently 47 species in Queensland and 26 of those are endemic or only known from that state. Um, and there are you know, two species that are known in common in Queensland and in New Guinea. <coughs> Uh, so, in um, 2019 um, through to 2022, Joan and I um, conducted several field trip trips in Queensland and um, we started in the southeastern um, corner of the eastern coast um, from Brisbane and in 2020. So, when we travelled there in 2019, it was very dry. Um, it was just after some uh, forest fires and uh, the vegetation was very dry. When we returned in March 2020 and we surveyed further sites um, further north, it was just after the floods. So, so we were sort of collecting. Um, so it's interesting to compare what we found between 2019 and 2020. Uh, expeditions um, and we went back in 2022 in April and May which is uh, a bit cooler uh, a cooler time of the year uh, so our, the, the purpose of the field trips was to collect all orca and any, anything <laughs> that we found uh, we sampled 34 sites and um, we used sweep netting, hand collecting and mercury vapour light trapping and interestingly, the Tartasini were very attracted to the light trap, so that made it easy. Um, we weren't specifically looking for Tartasini at all, we were just collecting everything. So um, we, we thought, um, we focused on the Tartasini because, uh, because of the revision by Faith Evans, it, it, and we had so many specimens collected from the field work, so it was a, an interesting group to work on. So after we returned from the field and we sorted and identified uh, specimens to family and subfamily or tribe if we could, um, that was about more than 5,000 specimens uh, all up from all the field work. Uh, we found representatives of 12 of the 18 genera which are known to occur in Queensland and um, in the slide here you can see representations of um, each of those uh, the representatives of each of those genera that we found of the 12 genera uh, and you can see that in shape they're not so different from each other they're quite um, consistent but um, maybe the coloration might vary a little bit but often they can be like the second um, species shown there, they can just be very plain coloured, um, uh, yellow or brown. Uh, after dissecting and examining all of the male specimens, uh, we identified at least 29 species based on um, comparing with Faith Evans' work. Um, and that meant that 80% of the species that we found, uh, that we had found in that short time in those three field trips, uh, were new, new species. So that was quite surprising considering that Faith Evans has only relatively recently um, reviewed the group, had only relatively recently reviewed the group and, um, and because the insect flora of Queensland is probably the best documented in the, in the country. Um, so the, there are three genera which have the most number of species in Australia and we found new species in all of those genera uh, and the other genera usually just have one or two species described and we did find um, for 10 of the 12 genera that we collected uh, we found new species in those groups. So um, just to give you a little uh, overview of a few of the species. Um, the Ostratartesis um, seem, to group, seem to group into two, um, where you have some that are just uh, uniformly coloured 
marked up brown externally, they look very similar to each other, and it's not until you look at the lab genitalia that you can tell that there are different species there. Um, the group one is uh, characterized by not having a tooth on the, um, on the dorso-apical portion of the pygopha, and um, it has an anal process, which you can see Um, is curved downwards and while well, in the second group the, the Tartasini species are, tend to be mottled, um, mottled brown and they have white flakes on the, on the veins. The, um, the pygopha has a dorsal apical tooth and the, the shape of the anal process is quite elongated shaped and that, that seems to be consistent so maybe they represent two different genera and uh, I just wanted to point out that the, one of the described species a murii at the bottom um, right corner there the adegas it has uh, processes uh, apical processes that um, it's, an as it's asymmetrical to start with, but we found that the apical process varied um, from being either on the left or the right side, so it seemed to swap sides, and that was found in, in one population on one side, so it shows that the uh, adegas there is quite variable um, in some species. Uh, in the Bruno Tartessus, another quite large um, genus, but we found 10 new, 10 new species. Uh, there are currently six described and we found 10 new species. Uh, the Bruno Tartessus, uh, you either have uh, the sort of uniformly brown or pale brown type on the left, um, and or you have specimens that are bicolored with the yellow uh, pronotum, head and pronotum and brown wings and they have a very uh, elongate, they're sort of characterized by their elongate pygopha as well. Um, I thought I'd mention this species, Bruno Tartessus fulvus. It's, um, it has a widespread distribution in Australia it's known from Western Australia through and along the eastern coast of Australia and down south. Um, I thought I'd mention these photos are from iNaturalist and they're all identified as Bruno Tartessus fulvus. It's meant to be a really common species, um, but you can see that from different states of Australia, the, uh, you know, they can appear quite different, they're quite variable, and um, maybe there are more than one species within that group. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's only through really examining the male genitalia that we can really resolve if these are the same or different species. And um, so there's further work to be done on the known species of Australia as well. Um, Plexitartes, this is another quite large genus in um, in the tribe and I uh, wanted to point this one out because within the tribe there's like a lot of variation uh, of the pygopha and the shape of the adegas and the connective as well. Um, currently these are considered plexitartesis but uh, perhaps um, there are, there's more than one genus within, within the plexitartesis itself. Um, you can see the yeah, the connect the ventral connective at the top um, attaches in a different place to the species down the bottom, and the shape of the pygopha is totally different between those two species. So, um, yeah, possibly they represent two different genera. Um, other nice genera in the tribe include the Utah um, which have 
very interestingly shaped adegas. Um, you can see there are lots of processes, um, additional processes on the adegas. And the Spanotartesis is also an interesting group. All the species in that group have uh, an elongated and curved um, pygrapha. So, um, so we're hoping, well, in last year we went back to Australia, um, went to Western Australia and we collected from six different sites um, in this little triangle of Western Australia, which is the largest state. And it was very, very dry, um, drier than usual, um, but we still managed to collect quite a few Orkana Rinka and um, these, we've, we're slowly processing those and more studies required, but so far we've found four genera and 18 species, um, including in this new Maniana genus, which has species where the female has an elongated head and the male doesn't, so it's quite tricky to match those. Um, there's quite a few very interesting genera in Western Australia and we'd like to um, take a look at those in the future but just to make the point that in Western Australia we found um, a, an average of 1.4 species per day um, mostly new they're mostly new but we're still working on the Western Australian fauna uh, the further in next the next road trip we hope to go to Cape York Peninsula, fill in the gap on the east coast there, Queensland. Uh, this would be a really interesting place to, to collect, um, but it's more difficult to find, uh, to negotiate permits, permission to collect in those areas, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, further work, uh, we, well, we won't be doing, but <laughs> I don't know. I think that some molecular data would be interesting um, to acquire for those groups and uh, further genetic provisions of some of those genera such as Osteotartesis and Plexitartesis would help to sort out whether there are further genera. Uh, and perhaps a revision of the tribal placement is necessary for some groups like the Numaniana which has uh, features which don't quite fit into the Tartacini. The appendix is very narrow and there are other features of the hind femur that don't quite match um, the Tartacini. So it would be interesting to look at um, where some of those genera fit uh, and also to look at the species uh, like Bruno Tartacis fulvus uh, to see yeah, whether they, they represent one or more species. So there's much more work to be done on the tribe. Uh, in summary, we've prepared, we're preparing a manuscript of the 29 new species. Uh, again, so in the 56 days of field work in Queensland, we found 29 new species, and that means more than one new species every second day. So, um, yeah. That means we increased the known fauna of uh, Tartacini in Queensland by 60% and 40% of the total Australian Tartacini fauna in just three field trips. Um, it would be also important, we haven't actually looked at the undetermined material in collections and that would be interesting to examine as well in the future. And I just wanted to finally say that the study highlights the incredible diversity of the Tartacini in Queensland, but yeah, there's just, it's just one tribe. Uh, we've probably got many more new species in other subfamilies, and there's just so much work <laughs> to be done just on the, the, the taxonomy of the Australian fauna and of leaf hoppers. It's just finding the time <laughs> and people. So um, to thank you for your attention and thank the field trips were funded mostly by the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences and the Leopold III Funds in Belgium. <laughs> thank you.